Hello, everybody. My name is Troy Nelson, and this is another installment of Live on KEXP at Home. And we are so close to being able to have people here in the KEXP live room. And uh, next time, I really hope that you all can. But for now, I got to say, I'm so excited to have Amel in the Sniffers with us today. How's everybody doing? Hello. Hi. Hi. Good. How are you? I'm really good. Awesome. I'm doing great. And thank you so much for recording an exclusive live performance for all of the uh, KEXP global community to check out. It is so fabulous. And I was just curious where you recorded this performance, because that place, it looked like half a living room and half a recording studio. It looks like really cozy. Uh, yeah, that was at, um, at a place called Sound Park, which is actually where we recorded the album. Um, and it's just uh, yeah in Northcote in Melbourne studio yeah it's pretty sick setup and uh who did you have uh are you engineering it yourselves or because it, it sounds fabulous uh that was done by um dan luskin who produced the album so yeah our uh, comfort to me was produced by dan and when we got this opportunity to do this kxp thing um we were like yeah well, we may as well do it at sound park where we record the album that that'll be a cool idea and yeah we hit up dan to engineer it and mix it so it was a fun little little thing we put together and so you're all also really comfortable with that place i assume yeah definitely yeah yeah it's local to us it's it's not far from where we live and um yeah wasn't too much of a pain in the ass to load gear in there and stuff like that so it was good it was actually like yeah it ended up being like, what, 12 months to the day almost that we actually recorded the album. We ended up doing this. Really? Recording. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I know that people would love to check this out, so let's get into it. An exclusive live performance from Amel and the Sniffers here on Live on KEXP at Home. Hi, we're Amel and the Sniffers. This song's called Summer.
Thanks, K E X P Ram on the sniffers. <laughs> this song's cut, don't let it cut like you love me. Bye from Amelia's Divis.
And there it is, an exclusive live performance for Live on KEXP at home from Amel and the Sniffers. And once again, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, record that and to sit down with us here on KEXP today. And, uh, and Amy just had a visitor who, who just uh, visited your house. You had to run away for a second. <laughs> I did have to run away for a second. Um, I've just got some blind repairs men come through. <laughs> and I had the doorbell ring, so I think I let him in. <laughs> That's amazing. You, he's blind and he's repairing your house. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't know if they can fix it yet or not, so we wow. so continued. So, so you have a, a, a blind repair. Yeah, so you have a person in there right now working on your blinds? Yeah, it's nice to have some company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, working on your blinds. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just have a, a few things uh, I wanted to ask you because I've been I've been uh, watching all of these uh, interviews with Amel and the Sniffers over the past couple of years, and and it seems like uh, all these interviewers ask like the same questions all the time. It's amazing, like across the board. And uh, so instead of um, instead of asking you like all of those mun mundane questions like who are your influences or how did the band start or all of those questions that I hear over and over and over, I wanted to mention some certain artists or bands and I would like to know, and any of you can jump in, I would like to know what comes to mind when you hear their name and what they mean to you personally, not as Amel and the Sniffers as a band, as as to you personally as, a, as an artist. So I'm just gonna mention uh, some names and then uh, I whoever wants to speak up about it, I would love to know uh, what they mean to you. So I'll start with X-Ray Specs. I love X-Ray Specs. I love them a lot. I didn't know who they were until like, the band had probably been around for about a year and then someone was like, oh, yeah, you must be influenced by X-Ray Specs. And I was like, who the fuck's that? And then like, obviously Googled it and I was like, oh my God, this is the sickest thing I've ever heard in my life. I think, yeah, Polystyrene's amazing and, and the music's amazing and like the rocket, like the guitars just fucking rock and yeah, it's awesome. I, I knew right when I heard it, uh, and I can't, ran into them late too, but right when I heard Artificial, I was like, uh oh, <laughs> I knew I was in for it. And uh, lo you and nailed that impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> Do you even put well, the accent you. in? Uh, <laughs> I, I, it, it has some tweaking to do. I'm trying to perfect it. Actually, it was the first time I ever did that. Um, okay, how about uh, this band, uh, The Radiators? Yeah, they're great too. I love that song. It's, Don't worry, it's all right. I'll be it's coming right. home to see you tonight. I'm coming home to see you tonight. I think that's the only Don't one worry. I know. It's okay. It's okay. I'll, be I'll be coming home, home to see you today. today. <laughs> I'm coming home to you. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we like that. Diddle, 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 diddle. I never, like them. Yeah. I, I'm not that familiar <laughs> yeah, with radiators. So, you, uh, Amel and the Sniffers turned me on to the radiators. So, thank you so much for oh, that. Oh, sweet. There you okay. Go. Uh, what about. Make sure you check yours in your car. Yeah, absolutely. What about Drunk Mums? Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't heard that name yeah. in years. <laughs> um, nah, yeah. Drum Mums, for me personally, when I was a young boy, very impressionable in Melbourne. Um, they played all the sickest shows. They were always the rowdiest and they were the ones when I was um, young that I would be like, oh, I want to do what they're doing. And they would just play like local Melbourne shows and they would always just go off. But I was like, they always had amazing energy with their songs and um, yeah. Yeah, it was just all like, of us as people so, would go along, like anytime we'd see that play and would always try and like, make sure we get a ticket and go see them and, you know, that's like where our friendships kind of like formulated really going to shows like Drunk Mums. And I, I was curious about, I wore this shirt for Amel and the Sniffers today. I was curious about, uh, does anyone care about this the band Saints. deeply? The yes, we do. We like yeah. them. We like the Saints as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know your history. 100%. Yeah, I love the Saints. I, actually, <laughs> what's funny is this, this shirt I used to wear a lot. It was in heavy rotation like maybe 12 or 13 years ago. And then I was told... Uh, by a friend of mine in in the past that was like never throw away rock and roll shirts. So I keep them in a tub once I sort of outgrow them or I kind of ran them through the cycle. And I thought about it today, literally two hours before I came to this interview. I'm like, I need to dig up my Saints <laughs> shirt for Amel and the Sniffers. I have to. <laughs> and so I dug through and I found it and I put it on and I realized that the pandemic pounds I've put on is really stretching this baby to the <laughs> max. So I'm trying to like, ugh. 
I'm like, I'm glad the camera's like <laughs> from here to here. It's and, Troy's uh, favorite saint <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't exactly. know if you've heard it or not, but um, do you know the band Tropical Fuckstorm? Oh, yes. Yeah, so I, I I've actually band. done a cover of um, Perfect Day by the Saints with them. Um, really? Which was you got really, to yeah. work with the Saints? No, I'm um, sorry, with Tropical Fuckstorm, they covered um, This Perfect Day by the Saints, and um, I did a vocals on it. So that was pretty special. That's amazing. Yeah, they uh, they do an amazing rendition of the Bee Gees staying alive. Tro- oh, yeah. It's, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, super wavy. Yeah, yeah, that band is really great. Okay, what about the band Coffin? Oh, oh there it is. Man. Yes. No way. Right yeah. here. <laughs> That's Five amazing. Us. Check it out. This is like every Whoa. day of our lives. <laughs> what? It, two of yeah. you are wearing Coffin shirts? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what yeah. And what have I got on it? <laughs> no, I got PBR Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a good friend Coffin. from Sydney. And they're like the sickest crew. Yeah. It's like really lovely people and have like the sickest shows as well. And they always send us merch for free. That's why we're, we all, we're always wearing them. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not a moment in time you won't catch us. One of us will always have on Coffin merch at some point in time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I have like um, 20. Yeah, they're really lovely people. 20 shirts or something. Yeah. Oh, and there's some yeah. just and fucking rip. Like they literally just, they just rip. You just want to punch walls and, and live large. It, so for me. The new song, um, City Sun, is That's amazing. what I was going to say. It's for amazing. me, who has it's, not heard Coffin, where do I start? City okay. Sun, then go to Fast Love, mm. and then wherever you want from there. And then done White by the Dogs, Dogs. Done by the Dogs. White Dog. Yeah. Mm. Okay. God, they're amazing. I love them yeah, so much. Yeah, they're good. I, we were meant to do the States of them like before COVID and stuff, but mm-hmm. obviously we couldn't. But that would just be the funnest tour ever. Yep. Because they're, they're such troublemakers too. Oh, but who, they're, not, they're not solely troublemakers. They're also good people, so they're the perfect combination. <laughs> right. Uh, who in the band is uh, really into powder monkeys? Me. Yeah. I, I don't know yeah. powder monkeys. That's amazing. Yeah, powder monkeys formed out of a band. It was like there was a band called God. They were all like 17-year-olds who wrote a very um, iconic Melbourne song. And then members of this band, Bored, from Geelong, went on to form powder monkeys. And powder monkeys always used to support Dead Moon whenever Dead Moon came to Australia. And, yeah, like they're just like, they're like a mixture of like Motorhead and Rose Tattoo together. They play like Motorhead riffs but like a bit slower. And, yeah, I think like amazing guitar solos and amazing heavy riffs and amazing vocals considering like Tim Hemmonsley was only like 25 and he had like vocals like Lemmy. Oh, it's amazing. The band God that they formed out from as well is like one of the best bands. Got such a good album and yeah, some just really rocking songs. <clears throat> I definitely am going to check that out. So uh, lastly, and this one's more directed at you, Amy, uh, what comes to mind or how do you feel when you hear the name Kylie Minogue? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's pretty iconic. I think she's smaller than me. But I think she's had a wonderful career. <laughs> I think she's amazing. I think she's amazing too. Um, all right. So moving on, and anyone also can answer this question, but I'm curious what any of your like, upbringings were like. Was there music in the house? Did your, did your parents actually turn you on to anything and listen to cool music? Or did you feel like disassociated from them? Because uh, like my parents were like much older than me and they really don't have any artistic bones in their bodies, as sweet as they are, but I felt light years distant from them artistically. Did any of you have the blessing of having artistic musical parents? Uh, I was just curious. I, I didn't really. Any of us have musical parents, do we? No. Uh, like, um, my my parents are massive music fans, and my parents, uh, like, my name's Declan, and they named me after a musician, Declan McManus, which is, like, Elvis Costello's real name. But, like, they, they played music for me all the time, but they weren't musicians. But I think, like, when I look back, I'm like, I feel like I was coerced into becoming a musician by my parents. <laughs> I feel like I didn't, yeah, I didn't really have a musical upbringing. Um, like my parents would just, yeah, get like the 20 best beer songs or like best of Fleetwood Mac or whatever. Um, so it wasn't like they had like in-depth musical knowledge, but thinking about it now, it's like 
when I was really little, my mum used to play flute at nursing homes. I don't know why she did that, but there was like a weird period in time where she did that and I'd go along with her. Um, and so maybe that's done something. And I also used to go to like a, a fair few car shows and there was always kind of like rockabilly bands there. I really liked them. Um, but, yeah, it, there was no like in-depth musical knowledge or like, you know, severe music fans or anything like that, just like pretty pretty straight down the barrel rock rock. ACDC and Fleetwood Mac and yeah. I've seen if Bryce had any say in that. Oh uh, yeah. Um, yeah. My dad had a pretty big record collection. Like he was a hippie back in the day. So he's got some pretty wacky stuff on vinyl. Um, but yeah, me and my parents played any music or anything. Um, and mum didn't really have any records at all. I think <laughs> from memory. So yeah, I don't really, yeah, I don't really know where I kind of got my musicality from. I'll tell you something funny that I remember, um, yeah, like all mum and dad's record collection. I think it was like two crates worth. And at some point when me and my sister were little, they were like, oh, we, we haven't used these in years. So they just gave it, gave the boxes to me and my sister. And the reason they gave it to us is so we could just frisbee them up the driveway and smash them on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had no, I don't know where any musicality in me came from because my parents, like, I think they, like, listened to, here I am, like, starting to get into, like, metal when I was maybe 13, 14, that's where it started. And then if they played any music at all, it was like Kenny Rogers, you know, like, you gotta know when to hold them. <laughs> just like, what? In the whole world. Yeah, Hang on. That, <laughs> That that was it. They didn't really listen to music, so I was very curious uh, about uh, about your backgrounds there. And going on to the next question, and Amy, this one is directed at you. And I have to ask you, what is the difference between a hippo and a zippo? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, one's heavy, one's a little lighter. <laughs> <laughs> My new How do you know this, That's Troy? <laughs> <laughs> you introduced me to my new favorite joke. <sighs> I saw you tell it That's... in some video or something. I just heard you say it, and uh, I, I, I LOL'd on, on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't got a new joke since then as well, but that one's such a good one. <laughs> That's, your, That's the one joke you have in your arsenal? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a timeless one. I'll tell you that. And It'll also... With, with 10 years. <laughs> it's a timeless one. You don't need to watch the television. Does anyone else know? what is? If that's Amy's one joke, do you guys have a go-to joke? Declan's full of them. And it's yeah, he's like been... He's been reading a book about him or something, I swear. There's <laughs> <laughs> this bloke and he's, um, he's doing this DIY project in his garage. And he's got the uh, the the power saw, the disc saw going, and uh, he starts sawing, and he accidentally saws his fingers off. So he rushes off to the to the doctor, and he goes, "Mate, like I've accidentally sawed me bloody fingers off. Is there anything you can do? Can you help me out? Can, you know, I got no fingers." And the doctor goes, "Oh well, have you got your fingers with you? I can I can sew them back on, and and you'll be all right if I can. If you got your fingers with you, I can sew them back on." And, and and the bloke goes, oh, I don't have my fingers. And the doctor goes, oh, why not? He goes, oh, I couldn't pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did not see that coming. <laughs> it's like pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. I th somebody told me one the other day. They said, uh, uh, why did the hipster burn their lips on the coffee? I was like, why? They said, because they tried, they, uh, they drank it before it was cool. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I had the same joke, but with pizza. Yeah, <laughs> oh, pizza. I got one like that. I think actually, I remember one. I'll probably let me try. It's like, doctor, doctor, every time I try drinking my coffee, I get this awful pain in my nose. And the doctor says, Have you tried taking a spoon out of the cup? <laughs> Is there <laughs> what? <laughs> absolutely no pays on that one. <laughs> Yeah, that is terrible. At first, I was like, "Why are you, are you pouring the coffee in your nose?" <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Amy, I was curious about what is it about the preacher comic books that interests you? Oh, I like them heaps. Um, I've only just gotten into them. I was reading um, Hellblazer before that, which is by the same two people. But I think just like 
the way they look and the way they tell a story and like the violence and they're just kind of evil and dark without being like, I don't know. I just like that they're, they kind of in a weird way represent like how I see the world sometimes and it feels nice to be in that world. Have you read them before? No, no. I, you introduced me to that as well. Yeah, they're so good. It's just like constantly smoking ciggies and like blowing up shit and like getting punched in the face all the time. And it's, it's nice. <laughs> Uh, and lastly, so obviously we've all been navigating this whole pandemic thing uh, to the best of our abilities. Uh, what does wh- what does it feel like and look like right now? Like, are you playing some shows? Uh, do you have a tour booked coming up? What is the next six months for Amel and the Sniffers? Well, we're currently still in lockdown with a 9 p.m. curfew. We've been in lockdown. This is our sixth one, and I think it's like our third month. We've We've been in the longest lockdown in the world in Melbourne, but we're about to come out of it end of this month. Um, and then we're going to be, we're actually going to be overseas in November. We're going to go to the UK, Berlin, Barcelona, and one show in New York, which will be our only American show. And then, um, so that we're looking forward to that because, yeah, I mean, we just miss it. So you're on lockdown still, your sixth lockdown, but you, did I hear that you are able to play some shows in other areas? Um, we haven't been able to, but we've got an exemption. Yes, yeah, so we'll be going overseas in November. So we'll be playing one show in New York, one show in Barcelona, one in Berlin, two in London, and that's it. Just a real quick run just to dip our toes back in and see what we can do. But it's, it's pretty bizarre and exciting because the thought of getting on an international flight next month um, after not even being able to go to the supermarket really is – Pretty exciting. Absolutely. And I mean, really, Amel and the Sniffers, like you sound fantastic on record, but the live experience is a a huge part of this whole project. And so I can only imagine just like, you know, everybody else, when when this all first started, it's like, really? You have all this momentum? But uh, thankfully, I mean, you guys like came out when you like did instead of during the pandemic because you gained a bunch of fans and a bunch of love before you could not tour anymore. And you already gained all these people that uh, that love you and they're just waiting and waiting and that's not going to go away. And especially you uh, you all just keep putting out fantastic uh, music. And lastly, before we go, I'm just curious, did you get a chance to. Uh, are you still kind of writing some new stuff uh, during these times in, in lockdown? Do you still get to write some new stuff and just think about the future, uh, think about the future and future records? Are, are you doing Not any really, of that right now? Are you just like <laughs> celebrating the, la- the latest record? We're just hanging out. Gus has been really busy because he's trying to try all the sandwiches in Melbourne. So he's busy doing that. And um. <laughs> <laughs> but just just in case just in case our publisher is listening yeah we're very busy <laughs> yeah. writing at the moment <laughs> yeah you're like king gizzard you've got like 12 of them ready to go yeah we're just waiting 13 <laughs> if king gizzard has 12 we got 13 yeah <laughs> i don't understand how they do that like them and like ty siegel and i just don't get it uh it, it's crazy like i guess ty siegel just put mm. out a new album which he hadn't put one out since 2019 and for him that's a crazy long time i don't understand how these bands just pump them out like that. And they're, and they're like all pretty good. It's very bizarre. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's I mean, not, I think not how I, I work, well, we're not working <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> You've got we're more of a, we're more of a, you know, quality over quantity. So absolutely. Of well, and you guys have got to, you guys have got to play with King Gizzard of, in the beginnings, right? Yeah. We, a lot. Yeah. That was our first. They um, really helped us out. They really helped us. Yeah. They, that was our first United States tour was supporting them. And that was like the biggest thing we'd ever done. So that was really nice that they took us under their wing a little bit. We we would not be where we are right now without King Gizzard. So thank you. King Gizzard. That's yeah. wonderful. Mm-hmm. Well, once again, thank you all so much for all the fantastic sounds, the fantastic music videos, and uh, taking the time to speak with us today. It was a pleasure meeting you all. And I hope that next time uh, we can be in this room together safely. So thank you, Amel and the Sniffers. Thanks, Troy, and thanks for squeezing into your old Saints shirt for us. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> <Thank> absolutely. <you. laughs> All thanks, right. Mate. Hopefully Hang we'll see you second. soon. Oh, good. oh, this is the guy that's fixing the blinds. <laughs> we got to check yeah. this out. <laughs> All right, sweet. Are they fucked? Yeah. <laughs> I gave him a shout-out on the radio. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you for trying anyway. See ya. <laughs> they couldn't fix them. It's fucked, they said. No. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. But at least I tried. I was curious what the end of that saga was going to be. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you got a blind guy in to come fucking check out your thing and he, he couldn't see the problem. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, that was a perfect way oh, to well. end that. Amy, that timing couldn't have been any better. <laughs> Wow. Well, there you go, everybody. There's Amel and the Sniffers live on KEXP at home. They cannot fix Amy's blinds. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.